Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech 24, a show during which we take a look at the latest tech innovations. Coming up. After cell phones and tablets, holograms are entering the classroom, enabling students to apprehend the most complex scientific phenomena through mixed reality. In this edition, we tell you more about an international project called Holomath that's set to reconcile all students with the field of study. Plus, it's resistant to dust, water, high temperatures, and it can survive a six-foot drop. Created for construction workers and firefighters, you can trust Caterpillar's S60 and S41 phones to stand up to the harshest environments. We start in Venezuela, where cash has become useless because of hyperinflation. To survive the soaring prices, many people there have turned to mining bitcoins to afford basic necessities. The practice is illegal, but bitcoin miners can make up to 450 euros a month. And that's enough to afford products such as baby diapers and insulin from overseas. Georgina Robertson has this report. Bitcoin has proved to be a robust alternative to the Bolivar during the current economic turmoil. The cryptocurrency cannot be devalued by overprinting and so has resisted hyperinflation. The number of Bitcoin users has skyrocketed, according to experts. I think the reason that Venezuelans have learned to use digital currency so quickly is to protect their money from inflation and to have access to a global market. For example, if you have to buy medicine that isn't available in Venezuela and you don't have access to other foreign currencies, digital currencies are a way to be able to have the possibility to make that purchase. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin do not need a physical bank account to send and receive money. All you need is an internet connection and some power. With electricity being state-subsidized, it's now one of the most affordable commodities in Caracas, and the Bitcoin miners are making the most of it. Mining Bitcoin is not illegal, but it is nevertheless viewed with suspicion by the authorities. Currently, Bitcoin mining in Venezuela, while not regulated, has to be kept hidden because the miners have been persecuted. These police forces are, let's say, taking advantage of this lack of regulation and have persecuted the miners, so their activities have to be secret. Behind closed doors, the miners perform their complex computations to earn enough to ride out the country's political and economic crisis, hoping their computers won't get shut down. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. Bitcoin mining is illegal in Venezuela, as we saw in the report. You can even go to jail for it. But in other countries like U Ukraine, uh, the practice is encouraged. That's right. In fact, two new bills which have been sent to parliament, they aim to allocate the status of financial assets to cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. Uh, secondly, the bills also want to reduce the electricity tariffs for Bitcoin mining. As you know, Bitcoin mining is a power-hungry process. And third, they want the simplest taxation regime in order to you know, boost the uh, mining of Bitcoins. As you know, there are many advantages of these cryptocurrencies. The biggest of them is the transparency part. Now, interestingly, in Ukraine, there was a property transaction using a cryptocurrency, not Bitcoin, but uh, the Ethereum blockchain. So yes, Ukraine is... Uh, on its way to embrace this cryptocurrency in a, in a big way. Thanks for that, Dan. We're going to move on now to a whole other story. Technology is becoming more prominent in today's classrooms as students use computers, tablets, and smart boards while learning. In France, an international project called Holomath wants to take the experience even further. It produces immersive live experiences in mathematical sciences using the latest mixed reality technology. Dan, tell us more about that. That's right. This is the brainchild of the famous French mathematician uh, Cédric Villani, who is a Fields Medal uh, winner, and he's also become a member of parliament this year. So the idea is to make students and other curious people understand the concepts of science, which can look a bit daunting when you just read in textbooks, to make it simpler and to make it more fun. So this project particularly uh, uses uh, the HoloLens made by Microsoft. And the first demonstration in this project is about the phenomenon of Brownian motion. Now, right now in front of me is a particle that has, that moves randomly. Basically Brownian motion is the random movement of microscopic particles, uh, like say dust particles in, in, a, in a fluid medium. So because of the motion of air molecules, uh, which move randomly, these dust particles get bounced around. And that's how you see the randomized movements of this uh, particular particle. As you can see here, this 
movement has been traced in a path which cannot be predicted. And one of the reasons why the Brownian motion is very important is because uh, there are many uh, different theories that are linked to it. So for example, the idea of temperature is linked to Brownian motion because the movement of air molecules is what essentially makes uh, us feel hot or cold. So, so an entire class could be wearing uh, those HoloLens and you could see the professor, you would also see the concept. Is that how it would work? That's right. So basically there's, a, there's an instructor or a teacher who will be wearing this HoloLens. And as of now, there are seven uh, listeners or students who would be using this HoloLens as well. And the, the instructor will be giving uh, or explaining these concepts. And he will be interacting with these students uh, through, this, uh, through this process. And whatever the instructor tells, the students will be able to follow through their HoloLens, uh, different HoloLens devices. So for example, here, as I mentioned about this Brownian motion, you can do multiple things. You can zoom in, you can zoom out on this path. Now this uh, particular pat pattern is called uh, fractal in geometry. And there are different fractals in nature. And in order to understand more, you can also have a link to, uh, to our planet. So a planet, for example, you have an option of finding different patterns in nature. So one of the uh, such patterns is the coast, the way our coasts are made. So that or is also coastlines, right? Coastlines, exactly. Now here, uh, I'll just give you a little demonstration of how it works. So it's not just about the physical phenomenon; it's also about the history associated with it. So as you can see now, there's this. Hall of Fame, all the scientists. And you can go back in time. Throughout, yeah, throughout, uh, since the start, say, I don't know, it's in the 18th century, who have been directly or indirectly associated with the Brownian motion. So Brownian motion is named after Robert Brown, uh, who was a Scottish uh, botanist. Let me find where he is. It was in the 1820s. So he must be around here somewhere. Where is he? Yeah, here he is. Move, move. So that is... Uh, Robert Brown, right. and so you can click on it and you can get the relevant information about the scientists. As of now, deeper, it's only about right. Robert Brown, but in the future, you can imagine that the that the possibilities are limitless. You can have information uh, related to different scientists, and you can also have different uh, phenomena in the in the way this Brownian motion has been produced in this headset. So it could be about space time and relativity. It right. could be about different geometric and in uh, other fields of study as well. In other fields of study as well. So as of now, the Target for this particular project is to produce six such experiences, which will be part of uh, the uh, mathematics museum that is uh, proposed to come up in Paris in 2020. Now, very quickly, virtual reality can also be used to understand a very complex physics concepts. That's right. Uh, virtual reality can be used to understand different concepts, like in chemistry, for example. Uh, the scientists in, at the University of Bristol, they have used virtual reality to uh, to, for example, here you can see that they're trying to not, uh, not uh, protein. Or? Yeah, it's a protein molecule. So it's very. I mean, to get a visual understanding of this process is important because you can easily learn the kinematics or the dynamics of interaction right. between molecules. So using these tweezers, it's been knotted and using the it's same. It's very hands-on. Yeah, right. exactly. You can untie them as well. And secondly, there was another example of a drug molecule interacting with an enzyme. So as you can see here, the interactions are important, you know, to develop uh, better drugs, you know, for uh, uh, bacteria which are resistant. So that also is very useful in understanding this mechanism. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to test 24 with two rock solid cell phones. It was unveiled over a year ago, yet the Cat S60 is still at the top of the list of the most durable and resistant phones there is. It's mainly due to the fact that it's waterproof and it's even drop proof. And to prove it to you, well, Dan has brought a hammer with him on set. And so I'm going to deliver some forceful blows on this. It's, it's an S41. We also have an S41. Uh, both these phones, S41 and S60, are uh, branded as Caterpillar. Caterpillar, as you know, is the US-based construction machinery manufacturer. But these phones are actually made by the UK firm Billet. Uh, so as you mentioned, the USP of these phones is their ruggedness, their resistance to heat. It can withstand heat up to 55 degrees Celsius. And the fact that it's waterproof. So let's have a little demonstration here. Hopefully it works after I take it out. Still working. It does, yeah. 
So yes, so this is very useful for people and who And it can are, go up to five meters deep, right? Yeah, in the that's water. right. And it can also withstand uh, drops from up to two meters. So maybe I'll just let's, give you a little demonstration. Try yeah. Drop it. It still works. So, so these phones are tailor-made for people who are working uh, in in places like, say, I don't know, construction workers or firefighters. In difficult conditions. Yeah, right. where you need, you cannot have delicate phones which, you know, go kaput at uh, just a little drop or with a right. little scratch. So these are very useful. Now, uh, interestingly, the, the S60 also has another feature, which is called thermal imaging. So it has a thermal imaging camera. So if I take a picture, while I'm taking a picture, it also shows the temperature level here. Right. I'm taking now. So why is this so... So there should be more temperature around my body? Exactly. In your head, your head is working over time, and your brain is working over time, I think. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, but when can that come in handy, let's say, for, well, for firefighters, it's obvious, but for yeah, construction absolutely. Even workers? Yeah, for construction workers, if you want to check the humidity, for example, now the humidity could differ in temperature because of, because of humidity. The walls may have different temperature if they are humid, for example, so that could be useful. Or even uh, at airports, if you want to check uh, the uh, incoming passengers, if some of them are having fever, so you can just click the, right. use this camera to, it's an easy way. I mean, of course you have to do thorough checkups, but it's, uh, how do you say, uh, the first, uh, first information you can have uh, using this camera, which is very handy uh, on the phone. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed the show and do stay with us here on France 24.